public. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to provide the instructions of law to you that you are part to apply at this phase. Uh, Ms. Harper is passing out the jury instructions. And as before, I'm going to ask that you please read along with me. Members of the jury, you have heard the evidence and the arguments of the <coughs> counsel. It is now my duty to instruct you on the law applicable to this portion of the trial. In general, the same legal rules were given last week during the trial phase of this case apply again in the second phase, in the second mitigation phase. As in the first phase of the trial, your function is to listen to all the evidence and fairly consider it, and then decide the disputed questions of fact and more specifically, what sentence should be imposed upon Anthony Pardon. You are the sole judges of the facts, credibility of the witnesses, and the weight of the evidence. It is your sworn duty to accept these instructions and to apply the law as it is given to you. You are not permitted to change the law or to apply your own idea of what you think the law should be. The fact that Anthony Pardon pled guilty, excuse me, the fact that Anthony Pardon was found guilty and had a trial and then elected not to testify merely ref reflects his exercise of rights guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States and Constitution of Ohio. The fact that he exercised these rights may not be considered by you for any purpose. I am not repeating every jury instruction given last week. Do not hesitate to refer to the jury instructions from the first part of the trial on any points if you deem them helpful. In the event you are confused about any legal rules, please carefully write out a note and send it out so that the lawyers and I can try to make all the legal rules as clear as possible. The sentencing mitigation phase. This second phase of trial is intended to focus your attention upon the aggravating circumstances that you and the court have already found or proven in the first phase, balanced against any and all the mitigating factors. The goal of this proceeding is for you to work through a fair review of the evidence and reach your verdicts on the appropriate sentences for counts 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. The, phrase, the phrases aggravating circumstances and mitigating factors have a distinct legal meaning which is defined below. As a preliminary matter, the word mitigation generally means to make less severe, less compelling, or less intense. The mitigation phase of a trial like this one is intended to allow each of you to consider all the evidence and whether there are any factors that reduce the degree of moral culpability and thereby may justify a punishment that is not the most severe otherwise allowed by law. If the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigating factors, then you shall return verdicts of death. You're not required to unanimously find that the state failed to prove that the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigating factors before considering one of the life sentences life sentence alternatives. You should consider and choose one of the life sentence alternatives only if one or more of you conclude after full and complete deliberations with other jurors that the state failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigating factors. That is, as to a death sentence, the verdict must be unanimous. If all, if after full deliberations, one or more jurors cannot conscientious, conscientiously recommend a death sentence because the state failed to prove that the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigating factors beyond a reasonable doubt, then one of the life sentences shall be considered. If you make a decision about a life sentence, then all 12 of you must be unanimous on one of the three possible life sentence alternatives before you can render that verdict. If you cannot unanimously agree on a specific life sentence, you will then inform the court by written note that you are unable to render a sentencing verdict, and we will give you further instructions. So, 
If you find that the state failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the aggravating circumstances Anthony J. Parton was guilty of committing outweigh the mitigating factors present in this case, or if you conclude the evidence of aggravating circumstances is balanced evenly by mitigating factors, then you may not return a verdict of a death sentence. In those situations, it will be your duty to decide which of the following life sentence alternatives should be imposed. A, life imprisonment without parole eligibility for 25 full years, or B, life imprisonment without parole eligibility for 30 full years, or C, life imprisonment without any possibility of parole. Life imprisonment without parole eligibility means just what it says. Anthony Parton would have no opportunity for release by the parole board. He would die in prison. Life imprisonment without parole eligibility for 25 full years means Anthony Park would not have an opportunity to seek release until he actually served 25 years, day for day, with no reduction in time. After 25 years, his situation would be reviewable by the Ohio Parole Board. There is no guarantee Mr. Park would ever be released by the Ohio Parole Board. His minimal sentence would be at least 25 years, less time already served awaiting trial. But it could be that all the rest of his life would be spent in prison. Life imprisonment without parole eligibility for 34 years is, is similar. That sentence would mean Anthony Parton would have no opportunity to seek release until he had served 30 actual years in prison, day for day, with no reduction in time. Even after 30 years, there's no guarantee Mr. Parton would ever be released by the Ohio Parole Board. Such a sentence would be 30 years minimum, less time already served, awaiting trial, and it could result in the rest of his life being spent in prison. The burden of proof. For you to decide that a sentence of death should be imposed upon Anthony Pardon, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the aggravating circumstances of which he was found guilty outweigh the factors in mitigation of imposing the death sentence. A defendant has the burden to go forward with evidence of mitigating factors and to prove their existence by a preponderance of the evidence. Preponderance of the evidence is the greater weight of the evidence. That is, evidence that you believe because it outweighs in your mind the evidence opposed to it. A preponderance means evidence that is more probable, more persuasive, or of greater probative value. But the ultimate burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt is upon the state in this sentencing phase. The state has the burden of proving that the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigating factors beyond a reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt defined. Reasonable doubt is present when, after you've carefully considered and compared all the evidence, you cannot say you are firmly convinced that the aggravating circumstances of which Mr. Pardon was found guilty outweigh the mitigating factors. Reasonable doubt is a doubt based on reason and common sense. Reasonable doubt is not mere possible doubt because everything relating to human affairs or depending on moral evidence is open to some possible or imaginary doubt. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt is proof of such character that an ordinary person would be willing to rely and act upon it the most important of his or her own affairs. Aggravating circumstances. Anthony Pardon has been convicted of five counts of aggravated murder with five aggravating circumstances on each of those five counts. Only the aggravating circumstances relating to a given count may be considered and weighed against the mitigating factors in determining the penalty for that count. You should not aggregate the counts in determining the appropriate sentence on each of the five counts. The aggravating circumstances that you shall consider as to count one are, one, repeat murder or attempt murder specification that prior to the offense, in this case, Anthony Pardon was convicted of an offense, an essential element of which was the purposeful, purposeful killing of or attempt to kill another person. Two, felony murder specification. That is, that this offense was committed while Anthony Pardon was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing, or attempting to commit aggravated burglary, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Three, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Pardon was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit kidnapping, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Four, 
felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit rape, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Five, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit aggravated robbery, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. The aggravating circumstances that you would consider as to count three are repeat murder or attempt murder specification, that prior to the offense in this case, Anthony Parton was convicted of an offense, an essential element of which was the purposeful killing of or attempt to kill another person. Two, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing, or attempting to commit aggravated burglary, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Three, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing, or attempting to commit kidnapping, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Four, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit rape, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Five, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit aggravated robbery, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. The aggravating circumstances that you will consider as to count five are repeat murder or attempt murder specification, that prior to the offense in this case, Anthony Parton was convicted of an offense, an essential element of which was the purposeful killing of or attempt to kill another person. Two, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit aggravated burglary, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Three, felony murder, for, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit kidnapping, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Four, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing, or attempting to commit rape, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Five, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit, or fleeing immediately after committing, or attempting to commit aggravated robbery and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. The aggravating circumstances that you would consider as to count seven are, one, repeat murder or attempt murder specification, that prior to the offense, in this case, Anthony Parton was convicted of an offense, an essential element of which was the purposeful killing of or attempt to kill another person. Two, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit aggravated burglary, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Three, felony, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing or attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit kidnapping and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Four, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit rape, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Five, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit aggravated robbery and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Excuse me. The aggravating circumstances that you shall consider as to count nine are one, repeat murder or attempt murder specification, 
that prior to the offense, in this case, Anthony Parton was convicted of an offense, an essential element of which was the purposeful killing of or attempt to kill another person. Two, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit aggravated burglary, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Three, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit kidnapping, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Four, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit rape, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. Five, felony murder specification, that this offense was committed while Anthony Parton was committing, attempting to commit or fleeing immediately after committing or attempting to commit aggravated robbery, and that he was the principal offender in the commission of the aggravated murder. These aggravating circumstances were proven in the trial phase. It is not necessary for the state to present further evidence to you regarding these aggravating circumstances. The aggravated murders standing alone are not aggravating circumstances. You may only consider the aggravating circumstances that were just described to you and which accompanied the aggravated murders. You may not consider the nature and circumstances of the crime standing alone as aggravating circumstances. As described more fully below, you may consider the nature and circumstances of the offense if you conclude they have some mitigating value. In considering the aggravating circumstances and the mitigating factors, understand that the aggravated murder itself is not an aggravated circumstance and the nature and circumstances of the offense is not an aggravating circumstance and can only be considered for mitigation. Mitigating factors. The law defines the concept of mitigating factors. These are facts about an individual or an offense that weigh in favor of a decision that a life sentence rather than a death sentence is appropriate. Mitigating factors neither excuse nor justify the underlying crimes. Mitigating factors are merely factors that one or more jurors may conclude diminish the appropriateness of a, of a death sentence. You must consider all the mitigating evidence presented to you. Mitigating <coughs> factors can include, but are not limited to, one, the nature and circumstances of the offense, two, the history, character, and background of Mr. Pardon, three, whether at the time of committing the offenses, Mr. Pardon, because of a mental disease or defect, lacked substantial capacity to appreciate the criminality of his conduct or to conform his conduct to the requirements of the law. Four, whether the victim of the offense induced or facilitated it. Five, whether it is unlikely that the offense would have been committed but for the fact that the offender was under duress, coercion, or strong provocation. Six, the youth of the offender. Seven, the offender's lack of a significant history or prior criminal convictions and delinquency adjudications. Eight, the offender was a participant in the offense but, but not the principal offender. The degree of the offender's participation in the offense and the degree of the offender's participation in the acts that led to the death of the victim. Nine, any other factors that weigh in favor of a sentence other than death. Point nine means you are not limited to the specific mitigating factors in points one through eight. You should consider any and all mitigating evidence or factors that any of, the, of you individually and or all of you collectively believe weigh in favor of a sentence other than death. Under the law, mercy is not a mitigating factor and should not be part of your consideration. There was evidence in the second phase of the trial regarding the defendant's prior criminal record or other alleged past misconduct. In fact, specification one, that was found by the court rather than presented to the jury is a prior conviction for attempted murder and shall be weighed as an aggravating circumstance. However, apart from specification one, you're not permitted to consider evidence of prior convictions or past misconduct in determining whether the defendant's history, character, and background offer mitigation to the punishment to be recommended by the jury, by the jury, excuse me. With the exception of specification one, Mr. Pardon's criminal record in other cases or misconduct may not be considered as an aggravating circumstance. 
past convictions apart from the attempted murder conviction in Specification 1 for other misconduct must not be considered for any other purpose. A single mitigating factor standing alone is sufficient to support a sentence of life imprisonment if one or more of you conclude that the aggravating circumstances do not outweigh that mitigating factor beyond a reasonable doubt. Similarly, the cumulative effect of all mitigating factors may support a sentence of life imprisonment if the aggravating circumstances do not outweigh all the mitigating factors beyond a reasonable doubt. It is for each individual juror, after consultation and complete deliberation with their fellow jurors, to make a decision on what, if anything, is a mitigating factor and how much weight to give that mitigating factor in reaching a fair and just sentencing verdict. It is not necessary that all members of the jury unanimously agree on the existence of any mitigating factor before that factor can be weighed by an individual juror against aggravating circumstances. Evidence and inferences. As you are instructed in the first phase of trial, you decide the credibility or believability of all witnesses, including the expert witnesses. It is the quality of the evidence regarding aggravating circumstances and mitigating factors that must be evaluated. The quality of the evidence may or may not be the same as quantity of evidence or the number of witnesses or exhibits presented in this case. Furthermore, as you were instructed in the first phase, one witness believed by you is sufficient to prove any fact if you find that witness believable. Confidentiality of deliberations. I remind you not to discuss this case among yourselves outside of the jury room, even when all 12 of you are present. That means not to discuss the case when you are in a restaurant getting dinner or traveling to a hotel if you are sequestered. Until this case is finally completed, do not discuss it with anyone else and do not permit anyone to even mention this case in your presence. I again remind you not to watch, read, listen to, or discuss news media accounts of this case or anything on social media about the case. General instructions for deliberations. For counts one, three, five, seven, and nine, you will have three verdict forms for each count during your deliberations in the jury room. I will now summarize these verdict forms attack. I will now summarize these verdict forms. Attach no significance to the order in which they were numbered. That has been done to keep them clear for you. Okay, verdict 1A <coughs> reads, we the jury having unanimously determined that the aggravating circumstances do not outweigh the mitigating factors beyond a reasonable doubt, hereby return the following life sentence on count one, and you check the appropriate one. Life imprisonment without parole. Life imprisonment with parole eligibility after 34 years. Life imprisonment with parole eligibility after 25 full years. Sign this blank day of blank, 2020, by each and every juror, and there would be a space for 12 signatures. Verdict 1B. We, the jury, being deadlocked and unable to agree on whether the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigating factors beyond a reasonable doubt, hereby unanimously return the following life sentence on count 1. And again, check the appropriate box. 1. Life imprisonment without parole. Life imprisonment with parole eligibility after 34 years. Life imprisonment with parole eligibility after 25 full years. Sign this blank day of blank 2020 by each and every juror in a place again for 12 signatures. 1C. We, the jury, having unanimously found that the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigating factors beyond a reasonable doubt, hereby return the sentence of death on count one. Signed this blank day of blank 2020 by each and every juror. And then you will have the same verdict form. Three uh, for count three, five for count five, seven for count seven, and nine for count nine. Okay, they are all identical to what I just read. Okay. The four person whom you previously selected may continue in that capacity, or you may elect someone entirely different for this phase of the proceeding. The foreperson will make sure that your deliberations are orderly and that each juror has a fair opportunity to discuss the case. Otherwise, the authority of the foreperson is the same as any other juror. Again, 
your initial conduct upon entering the jury room is a matter of importance. It is unwise to immediately express a determination or to try to insist upon a certain verdict. Doing so may make you dig in and hesitate to change your position even if you might decide later that your initial view was not fully considered. Consult respectfully with one another. Consider each other's views fairly. Deliberate with the objective of reaching an agreement if you can do so without disturbing your individual judgment. Each of you must decide this case for yourself, but you should do so only after a fair discussion with your fellow jurors. Do not hesitate to change your opinion if convinced it is wrong or overlook important considerations. However, you should not surrender honestly held convictions merely to be congenial or to sign any verdict solely because of the opinion of the other jurors. If during your deliberations you have, questions, you have a question about the legal instructions or verdict forms, it should be discussed in the privacy of your jury room. Before you send any question out of the room to the court, be sure that, at, be sure that, as, that it is written and it will not reflect the status of your deliberations unless it is a note to tell us that you appear to be deadlocked. Any question should be reduced to writing so that there will be no misunderstanding as to what you request. It should then be delivered to the bailiff who will submit it to the court. Do not send any question to us asking for further evidence or clarification of the evidence you have heard during trial. All the evidence has now been submitted and we cannot supplement it. Also, you must rely on your collective memory and may not request a transcript of testimony. Verdict forms and exhibits. We will place in your possession several sets of the verdict forms so that you can each review them as necessary in the jury room. The foreperson will return one signed set of verdict forms to the courtroom once you have reached a verdict on counts one, three, five, seven, and nine. As explained in the first phase, you must decide each and every one of those counts separately. The exhibits from the first phase of the trial were numerous and in some cases a bit bulky. However, all the exhibits have been admitted for your consideration in the second phase of the trial. We will again send all of them back to the jury room uh, for your review during these deliberations. Similarly, we will uh, get a computer and have that available if any of you want to see or hear any of the electronic material during deliberations. Deliberations. Jury deliberation should take place only when all 12 jurors are secure and in the jury deliberation room together. Should any one juror absent himself or herself at any time, all deliberations must cease until all 12 jurors are together in the jury deliberation room. Alternate jurors. Those of you selected as alternate jurors must remain available while the other deliberate since any of them might fall sick or have an emergency. You too will be sequestered until the jury of 12 has returned its verdict in open court. You'll be taken to another room apart from the other jurors and remain under the direction of my bailiff until the verdict is reached. The alternate jurors continue to be a part of the jury panel while the other jurors are deliberating <coughs> until you are fully released from the court, fully released from this case by the court. Do not discuss this case with anyone other do not discuss this case with each other or tell anyone how you would have voted until you are fully released from this case by the court. <coughs> do not speak of the case on social media by telephone or in any other manner while deliberations continue. Sequestration. Ohio, Ohio law requires all of you to be sequestered during deliberations in this mitigation uh, sentencing phase of the trial. It's impossible for the court to determine the length of time that your deliberations will take. Take that time which you believe to be appropriate, fairly, thoroughly, and carefully review all the evidence the parties have provided to you. Do not rush to judgment, but instead, give the case the serious thought and attention that the parties deserve, and that will make you individually comfortable that you have done your best in, re in rendering your verdicts. While you are sequestered and working on this case, if any of you think of any accommodation that will make that will make you more comfortable, please advise our bailiff, and we will, to the best of our ability, uh, provide it promptly, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a little late. Uh, 
as I indicated to you before, once again, you're no longer on my schedule, on your schedule. Uh, what I would ask uh, at this particular time uh, is to go back and decide uh, if you want to maintain the same poor person and interested in getting another poor person, then let us know uh, who that person is and then what your intentions are. Uh, unfortunately, we are on a bit of a schedule here. Um, and it's been a long day. I'm going to leave that up to you. If you do decide that you want to begin some deliberation now, or if you want to like, wait uh, and begin uh, or renew in the morning, I'll give you some time to have those discussions. All right, does anyone have any questions about anything that I said at this point? All rise for the truth.